We ready? Okay. Why don't we start all over on this thing so we can so we can go through the All right. We can go ahead and what we do this, Chris. Go ahead and let's uh, shut this unit down for just we're gonna we're not gonna we'll leave the pump on and everything, but we'll take the flip the speed off so that we have a so he's like taking the water off the machine, okay? What this is all about, guys, is this is the shutdown sound like. Right there. Um, it about the lift and hold. Turn it off. And the box. And I found out where the speed is in those Chris. It's, it's got to be 21 point, and the, the four has got to be flashing just before it goes to five to get the right speed. Okay. Are both, I think that uh, partial shutdown needs a little tightening in the back, I mean the, the full shutdown needs some tightening in the back, it's loose as a goose. Isn't it? So we've got, right now we've got water's off the unit, all right, head gate's in. Both solenoids are picked up, correct? I've got them de energized not energized Energized is the way you're at, isn't it? That's energized, huh? Okay, we don't need the other one on, so. So, the governor gate limit is at zero. So we're safe that way. Do you guys do it this way? Do you do the uh, the main valve first? Okay, that's the way I like to do it. So we will do we'll do the aux valve first. Okay. Lock up my solenoid. Don't really need it on the aux valve, correct? Well, normally you wouldn't even have to do it on the ox valve. On the pelt, you just put the ox valve. Yeah, we don't have to block that song. Not in ox valve. And in main you should. Right? The rest of you guys block it up on the main when you're doing the main valve calibration, right? Alright. I'm on ox valve. You're from where? See where I end up here. All right, this one squeezes at zero. It's not below. Okay. This sucks. It's perfect calibrating. Huh? Yeah. No, but uh, all right. So you've done your stroke. So now you're going to go, and you're going to make sure you're. If you have a staff on your servo, you're going to make sure it's at 100 right now. All right. You knew you started at zero. Now, if you were over 100 or under 100, or you had cable stretch, you know where you would take the cable stretch out? If it's just cable stretch? Uh, restoring cable. Right, you just would take that three quarter inch wrench, three quarter inch wrench on wood, thinking about this one too. But anyway, you would, you would take that out. Now if it's more than that, then you had to do, you would have to take at the top end, you would have to adjust the stroke rod, and then at the zero, you doesn't take the other half out at the cable. Have you had to do that yourself? Yeah, so if you're, you're on zero and then you, you over travel on 100, you take it. Take that little, it. take half of it out on the stroke, <coughs> and then the other half on that. Right. Now sometimes that takes 
two or three pops. Right. Okay. It's real nice if two guys are doing it because one guy can stand in the back. Now, you think we ought to? You want us to mess this up so we can recalibrate? Yes. You better. Okay. Why don't we? Why don't you guys uh, get a drink of water or something? And, I don't want you to see where we're cheating. <laughs> I mean, it really looks like ash, right? <laughs> it's like all over the All right, so see, you see where zero is, huh? So we're about a good 2% two per, two off on zero. going to be a little of both, but I'm start with the cable first a little bit, just to see what I got on the top end. So if I was on the top end, cable of, I'd be adjusting here, right? On the bottom end. You guys overhaul your units, you, you time them, oh, you're yeah. done and everything, and record it for the, compare it against the last year. Yeah. Okay, so I got 2%. Do you guys want to get a wrench and see if you can get part of that out? We know we've got a problem on the stroke, too. Okay, so we'll just take about, start with, we'll take about 1% out of that, and it's a, it'll be on the cable end, right? Yeah, that's a special open-end adjustment. Yeah, this would be, this would be the cable end of the restoring cable. Yeah, three quarters. Three quarters. I used to be able to see within a thousand stamps around two. <laughs> and I'll, and you, naturally you would have a guy out here, okay, seeing what is. So come off a little bit. That crest is work. Getting some movement. Oh yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, just a little bit more. All right, let's stop right there for right now until we make sure the stroke is. All right. Lock it down. Yeah. So you see how much easier this be? You got to have a couple guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to wear yourself out. Right. Going in and out, and you'll, uh, you'll do more trips than you need to. All right, so now, now, we're going to stroke it. You all, you all clear? Okay, you getting out? Be good right there. Okay, here we go. So I had like 1%, right? Me? Yeah. And a lot of times, I don't on a on one of your units. I like to bring this up pretty slow because it has a cushion on one and it doesn't have a cushion on the top. Right. Okay. So we still got a pretty good stroke there. Okay. So if you were gonna do the eccentric on the stroke here, where would you feel that you do it? Come out here and look. Do it on that main rod right there. Right here. Right there. Okay. Yeah. So 
So here it is. So it's got to be in that eccentric, and I, I've got to raise it up. It's easier to get to. I'll raise it up. And for our purposes, all we'll basically have to do is loosen it up and slide it where that lock is on the eccentric. Gotcha. Because I left, you know, otherwise you would have to do it there. Mm -hmm. You just, and I never, on a governor, I never loosen to where it flops around. I loosen to where something has to push or you have to tap it. Right. Because then you don't overshoot. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me go, let me go up so you can get to it easier. Okay, so you loosen a little bit here, pop it up there, okay? Yeah, and put the eccentric. Basically, we didn't touch this part very much, okay? Not really That's tight. not really an eccentric though, is it, Mike? It's just a slotted... It's just a slot. Slotted hole. Slotted hole. And then you use the, for your fine adjustment, you take that set screw yeah, and, and drive it come down. Or you got to loosen it up and then tap and it you up. have to hold, yeah, tap it up. You have to push to, it up. Yeah. So it's not in, in the, the case of a real eccentric. No, it Correct. doesn't have that yeah. two-way deal. So we'll loosen this up, pop this up a little bit, and we'll try another. Calibrate this stuff. When you read We've got the uh, uh, pitch blades. So much more linkages and stuff. Oh, you uh, bet. Because you, you've got another. Yeah, do you have the two? Uh, you, you've got yeah, you the got two, two distributing valves, right? right? Yeah, you got your one, one for the blades. And then one for the right. Gates, yeah. But the, but the the linkages to this are the yeah, same. It's, the, it's, the blades it'll be off have their own little adjustment off to the yeah. side, up mm -hmm. and down, and it has a set probably a stack of cams okay. down at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. All right. Did you get it loose? Oh, it's she's up hard. And you got this back tight? Okay. Let's try her again and see what we accomplished anything here. So we're about 1% off on the zero. Okay. You don't like your. Uh, right. So this, they tell you to on the span on your needles, like if you overshoot or undershoot. So, like if you were to undershoot, you would actually do that a little snug and then take that sensor. And move a little bit, and then you cycle your gates because if you've made a change, so they always want you to cycle your gates at least a couple times. And so everything's reseated and everything's going to sit where it's going to stay. Still over. And then you, and then you yeah. go we'll back. Take your too much on that one. So we're, we're, we're going to go back on the back on the cable. Yeah. Because see, like on your belt there. And bring, you bring that cable down to zero, down which will because you're restoring cable. Right be like we had a, yeah, a, a stretch cable. Call, okay. We gained a little bit on this one on the top end. end. So there's a, on those ones, it's kind of like that, but you, it's on a pedestal, and then you have that gear that runs okay, on the so long cable. Two, two long. Yeah. A, a middle so let's get the rest of that stretch out of the cable and should so come out. That, that mark on that uh -huh. next to the uh -huh. gear should be at on the ship. You know what Did I'm talking about? Did you have a little... Uh, was that little fine adjustment loose when he did that? Well, and if it's right, if it's in the center, if everything's right when you're at fifty percent, it's not a big deal. No more. A little more. More. More still. More. Oh, well. With seal bearings instead of greasy. Well. Oh, you ran in the hole. It wasn't moving very good. So. About about a half a percent. We changed our a little bit more. Okay, go ahead and back that up. Tighten that up. 
and then after I get done doing that, I try to just give that a little jiggle so you get the, because anytime you do this and it's been running for quite some time, it, it'll get a, where it bends, yeah. And a lot of times this is a lot sharper bend, you know. I just, I just make sure, I just give it, give it a tug. And what it does is it reseats it into that new place in the bend because most of them aren't nice and smooth like this when they come up and they do a, a kink. Yeah. Okay, let's see what we got now. Are you all clear? Yep. Went a little too far on that one. Okay, that, that was just like, because we had the stroke back where it was, basically, it was just like straight cable stretch, okay, because now we're at 100, we're a little over 100, all right, and I believe we're a little under zero, so we could fine tune the stroke. Right. And we're pretty much dead on zero there, okay? We're pretty close to that. You know, any, if you can get within one percent, mm -hmm. that's damn good. And you, you say that's pretty, pretty close. With me. Yep. Okay. When you try to get everything, what we used to call dead nuts, on this thing, a lot of times you're just, you're going to spend a lot of time, and you're not really accomplishing anything, especially with the performance of the governor. If you can get it, if you can get it within the one percent, it'll do a good job. So that's on it. Zero and 100 on the auxiliary valve. What's that? What kind of pressure you guys running? Yeah. About 160, 150. I was going to say, when you hit the transfer valve yeah. at our plant, it's like, <laughs> bang! You know, when you... What's your, what's your pressure? 300? 500. How much? 500. Oh, yeah. Big difference. Yeah, big difference. Ours is 350. Okay, so now we're in... Main valve, right? I'll be dipped. It won't run. What do we got to do? Shut down the solenoid and stuff? That's, it's not picked up. Yeah. So you got to block it up. Here we don't have to use the block. We'll use a little switch here. Okay? Well, 
50 yeah, dead on, isn't it? Yep. Because we didn't mess with that. All right. But if it was messed up, if that if that was messed up, you know that's that's to me that's the blessing of doing the auxiliary valve. Because mm -hmm. do the auxiliary. If the auxiliary valve stroke was off, all right. This machine, because it's set up like we have it set up, yeah. that was just like doing the main valve. Okay, if you had the auxiliary valve stroke off, you know you would just shorten. See that little yeah. rod there? You shorten, you shorten that, that little rod. that little rod for the stroke. Right. But the adjustment we did was actually on the main. It was on the. It was. Gotcha. It's doing the main adjustment gotcha. for the dials. We had one one time. We have nitrogen closure. Like if we overspeed or lose power at the at the plant, there's we have nitrogen tanks and then they charge the line and there's a valve there that that closes to make sure it closes again. Yeah. So there's a. I was talking to an operator, really smart guy, knew knew his stuff. He was a mechanic and then he would, ended up being an operator. Well, anyways, he's like, hey, you need to put a cap on that on that fitting right there. You, it'll just run out if you if you don't. So I screwed that cap on, and I went to try and fire the unit, and it would not come on because it, it pressurized the nitrogen and freaking closed my valve. Shut it. So I couldn't I couldn't move. So did like, they? Because you had an you got an accumulator tank too, right? Air over oil. Yeah. 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 Okay. So you have air over oil. They put this on as an extreme shutdown. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. For like. You're catastrophic right failure. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was an added redundant uh, mm -hmm. closure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it couldn't couldn't make the transfer. Yeah. So everything was done. We're ready to fire up. Put it online and everything. And the we went to try and fire it up manually. And all of a sudden, you couldn't even open the gates. So we had to go underneath. I took that stupid cap off. Then we had to bleed the bleed the nitrogen valve or the the valve off. So we you got a get pressure it, yeah, trapped in it. Exactly. So we opened that up and then it fired right off. So I told that operator, I was like, "Hey man, you don't need a cap on that anymore. <laughs> That's the only way it can breathe to function." Right. Right. Yeah. It was probably just a well, how big a small. Part? Well, it was like a JIC, it's like a number ten. Yeah. And it was it was just something simple like it's, that. It's. It's almost like it's a little the, check valve. It's the drain side, so that valve could just that valve could cycle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Those are the things you don't think about, and then yeah. all of a sudden they're there, and you're like, "What in the hell did I do <laughs> wrong? Because this thing ain't gonna run." <laughs> yeah. Well, I've had ones where go to transfer back to the main, and something happens in the transfer valve; it won't. The handle feels like it in. It's in, but you can't fucking move nothing. You know, a lot of and times what that is is it. They've been running one spot in a long time, yep. and those poppets won't won't seat good. So if the poppets stand up, so it can be dirty. Mm -hmm. and you know, cages, you're, yeah. and you're open and close. They can be dirty, or the rings can be all gummed up, mm -hmm. and it won't quite. A lot of times, the way I do it is I just go back and forth a that's while and what, pop those that's babies, what we did. and it, and it'll come yeah. free. But that's telling me that it wouldn't hurt to, to, clean it. to when you have it isolated from the pressure altogether in Absolutely. the air. Absolutely, yeah. To pop the top off and see what see mm -hmm. what it looks like in there. You know, I mean, I've seen it when they wouldn't even come out. You got to use a put a. Four by four up here in a chain fall and mm -hmm. pull a jean and swap the pop pockets. <laughs> and then you got to have a little ring compressor, you know, to get it yeah. back in. Yeah. They run all year long and never shut down. And they're going to build up stuff. Oh, yeah. Or, you know, we go from standby to, to online to condense, you know, that might, we might do that two, three, four times a day sometimes. And other days we won't. They'll be in standby for a day or more. Oh, yeah. You know, but I've heard some of the units. I mean, know, the, the best thing for any kind of whether it's a valve, a governor, if it runs all the time, yeah. you know, it's good for it. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you don't operate a valves, I mean, why do you think they have regular periodical tests on 
head gates and everything else. So you have six months partial closure test and it's in your guide to tell you, you know, a valve that just sits open all the time or closed all the time, you don't want to have to open it in a hurry or, or close it in a hurry. It may not work unless you test it periodically. Right. We have a PM that we exercise valves. We have a PM that does that, and we have to go and exercise all the valves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always been a, a preventative maintenance step. Mm -hmm. It's just whether it got done or not. Right. Or pencil whipped. Because it's a miserable job. That that valve PM, oh, it sucks horribly. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Constantly. Yeah, With a wheel you wrench. Like freaking Popeye by the time you're done at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, carpal tunnel. Yeah, that too. Yeah. All right, so now if you're at, at your plant, you would have the, the calibration. We'll go back and we'll read through the calibration and see if we, if we covered some of those things to check. We'll go back and, and go through it. And then it'll be like when we watered up, or if you had a ball head driver like we've got on this, we can get the speed. Okay, well, we're, we're about a half a percent. You know, set the speed. Not yet. We're going to go through a little bit of this. We never finished. Uh... No. Would you do me a favor, though, and take those gates to zero? And then drop out that solenoid. about leaving tools around too. Okay. Sure that the gate servo motor is completely closed. We did that. Take a picture of the gate servo motor in the closed position. Or take a measurement on the picture. And we on yours you'll have the staff, you know, and it'll show you the staff. And make sure it's indicating zero. And that's what they're verifying there by looking at your staff. They measured the stroke. Now, whatever that is, that's 13 and a half inch stroke, huh? So that shiv from the from that center of that restoring shaft to where the cable lies should be around 13 and a half, and give and it'll give yourself a little bit of room on each side, and that's what. If any eccentrics need to be done, they can be done. Now, when they make the stroke longer, you won't have any eccentrics. You have to take what you get on the dial, okay? And a lot of utilities are, are doing this. They, they make a good buy and they get a bigger wheel, okay? And they can add another. Once they go over about a half inch to an inch of stroke, you run out of shiv. So then you're going to be zero and 104, you know, or whatever, and you're, you're not going to get that out of that. It's just gonna, you'll have to take what you get on the dial if they've done that. Or you get the proper shift, and then you could recalibrate it. Just the governor gate limit control to its maximum position past 100. Measure the actual gate servo stroke. We didn't mess with the gate limit, okay? If the difference between the gate position at 100 and 0 is 100, then the governor stroke is correct. If the governor gate position was reading 1% at 0 and 101 at 100, then that would be kind of what we ended up with the last thing we did. It was just like cable stretch on this, on this particular unit, all right? Adjust the restoring cable rod in to make the governor gate position read 0, and we did that. This is showing a little different configuration on the Pelton made a lot of these round, uh, That's what we got. you got the round uh, instead of a half moon looking thing, radius thing. But you're doing exactly the same thing. Should the actual governor stroke be greater than 100%, then the following adjustments have to be, to be made. And that's when we would take half out, 
using the gate stroke adjustment with the wicket gates at 100%, and you do that part at 100, and then you do the other half at the zero, which is the cable end at zero. And that takes, sometimes that takes, if it's been, somebody's messed with it or something, it may take you four or five shots to get it, but most of the time it comes in, in a couple. Repeat the two steps until the gate position reading on the governor is in agreement with the gate servo motor position at zero and 100. We've, we've done that. Okay. What was he doing here? Now, if we can get him, we can talk to him in the half the distance here. Position the governor gate limit control to 50%. If the gate position indicator on the governor does not indicate 50%, adjust the gate limit connecting rod until the gate limit position indicated. Once you show more the the uh, indicating rod, if that was off, say you you had the gate limit at 50 and the needles off, just to bring it in. Hmm? Now this is showing the. Uh, Let's go up to the gate. Adjust the governor speed. Do we misplace one of these? So, dial indicator, top of the speed droop, incline plane. You guys have never adjusted your droop, have you? No. Odds are, like I said, if 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 you have to do droop, the way you would calibrate droop is is here, and that is, you'd put it to zero. All right, you put a dial indicator on it. Mm -hmm. and you would stroke it from zero to 100 percent and you should have less than two thousandths of indication on there like i said the way i do it is when i see the unit online i give it one percent change and if it goes 18 to 22 i know the droop's right so i can eliminate that step all right and once the droop has been the same for a long time it ain't it don't change doesn't change. Especially if you double check yourself and prove it with a with a one percent turn. You make these pictures so big you can't see what half of it's on, huh? I wish I had that. Remember my little Balsh book? It was it was pretty good. You could tell it was a long time ago because it's, it's real pictures, you know, that are taped in the book. <laughs> Install the variable. Actually, the JC boils as good as it gets. If you guys want a good, if you want a calibration procedure, I'll give you one. It it'll say JC uh, boil powerhouse for Pacific Corp, but it's a good little for a. For a B, it's a good little. Uh, it's better than I think. It's better than Glen Canyon. So. For the Pelton. Yeah, for Pelton. And I also have calibration pages for mechanical actuators. And I can, if you just send me an email, say, hey, I want this. Send me this, and I can send it electronically to you. Okay. And my card's in the front of your book. It's about the second page or so. Over. So can we do all this? Can we verify group and do all that? We so can verify it when I lie to it and put speed on it. Okay. I can show you how you would verify it at your plant. Right. The unit was online. Right. Now, you're going to have to be with operations there because when you do it online, you know, you can you can put a variable speed drive on it. This isn't real because it's right. It's almost true speed. They call yeah, right. it. Okay, we're we're simulating speed. Right. So if you do it online, you're going to load megawatts on. Okay, right. so an operator is going to want to say, "What do you want me to do? I want you to make one complete turn for that." 
and then give it three three minutes or so, to, and then you can go back the other way. You look at the span on this. It's got to stop pretty close there, but the stop over here. So if I had more droop on it, it would take a little bit for that to happen, all right? So if you had, say, 7 8% droop, so if you had 10% droop on a machine and you gave it one full turn, you'd go 10% gain instead of 20. Jerry was gonna. He said he was gonna have a strobe here. Is that a strobe? The right strobe now? is right there. Yeah. Sitting up there. Okay. Oh, it is. Yeah. Good. So we'll, when we get to this point here, why don't we, why don't we clip that on, and we'll see. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, please. Our little ball head motor is driving this thing instead of where it should read 1200, which is double, because I got it on the second scale. It would be like 600 RPM, but I got it set at, it's so and it's going about 869 RPM inside. Would you guys want to come over here and hold it and adjust it here? We'll see how far it is off actual speed, because when I started again, it'll drop down. That's pretty close to right there, huh? So instead of 600, it's about 434 RPM because I'm not using true speed of the water. I'm, I'm using this little. So like on Woodward, they have a, uh, a dither vibrator? Yes. Um, this one has a thumper. A thumper. Now, when it's just sitting, not, not, uh, Speed no load is just sitting there. Yeah. It's not. It's not. If it's, a, if it's speed no load. No, yeah, I mean, it's turning. I mean, it's just. You mean uh, dead in the water? Yeah. No, it's it's not moving at all. The ball head is not moving. In fact, you'll find on a Pelton ball head when it first rolls off, and you can see the unit start to move. This is just barely be turning, just like the. You know, it'll be a little behind the shaft until it gets up with enough juice because you got to realize that PMG is just building voltage and it can't turn it until it gets up to a certain speed. And it's usually like a four to one difference yeah. anyway. Yeah. Like this this spins a lot now, faster so it, yeah. whether it's a four pole, six pole, eight pole, twelve pole. And this is when you'll really find, if you've got a PMG problem and it's really a problem, you, you know it's low, and you'll wonder if that's causing what your hunt is, you grab one of these and put it on there, and you'll see that, you'll, you'll see this in this position, it'll sit there like this and go, and, and you'll be able to look right over there, and those weights will be moved at the same time as, as this is flopping around.
about time for a little break, I think. Did they ding their dinger yet? <laughs>